my friends welcome back to my channel if you're new my name is Amanda so in today's what's for dinner video I've got some easy and yummy pantry meal ideas for you these are all things that I kind of came up with trying to use up stuff I had on, in my freezer and just you know on hand I'm really trying to go through my freezers and get some stuff used up so I hope you enjoy this video if you haven't already I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel and join my YouTube family. I do all kinds of what's for dinners, recipe videos. It really is all about the food here. Also make sure you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any time I post a new video. But let's go ahead and get into these meal ideas for you. Hit that like button if you're excited to see these and we'll go ahead and get into them. So we're gonna first get started with our breakfast for dinner. And I love having breakfast for dinner. It's so quick and easy. Now this is my sausage that I use. This is all natural sausage. It's been the lowest sodium sausage I can find. It's in the freezer section. I get it at Kroger and it's really good. It really doesn't have a ton of grease in it either, which I like because I don't like it to be so greasy. So I actually just throw it in the skillet frozen and it kind of just thaws as it cooks and I get it all cooked up. I typically cook up the entire package. And I freeze whatever we don't use so that I can throw together some more sausage biscuits later or something like that. So it's very handy. So now that our sausage is cooked, we're going to go ahead and start on our sausage and cheddar drop biscuits. I've just got some flour in here and I'm adding some baking powder and whisking that together. And then we're going to add in our sharp cheddar cheese as well as our sausage. I use six sausage patties for this recipe. I don't go by like measurements of weight or anything like that, but it's basically a third of that frozen box of sausage um, patties. And then we're just going to stir that together, set that to the side, and we're going to go ahead and mix our wet ingredients together, which is just a cup of milk and an egg. And so it's super easy. Now you can also, you know, add seasonings to this if you like, you know, some salt, pepper. I personally feel like with the sausage and the cheese that you've got plenty of like salty things in there and so it's fine but definitely feel free to add those if you like because again I try to watch my sodium so I'm going to always err on the side of lowering the sodium in a recipe. Now we're just going to combine these two together get it all good and you know moistened. Now I will say occasionally I've had to add a little flour here. I've never had to add liquid um, so if you feel like it's really really wet then you can add your little flour in there. But typically speaking, they turn out fine even if you don't. I've, I've not always done that before. So uh, I'm just going to scoop them with an ice cream scoop on here. And I usually get somewhere between 13 to 15 of these. It just kind of depends. And I bake them at 400 degrees for about 20 to 22 minutes. You're going to start to see them get a little golden brown in spots. And they'll be nice and done. These are so good. My husband and my son are completely addicted to them. They absolutely love them. And so we make them fairly often, but um, it's really an even yummier when you sit there and add like a gravy for it. So that's what we're going to do today. You know, we've baked those, we've got those sitting to the side and I'm going to use a little bit of my sausage since we've already got sausage in the muffins. I don't want too much in the gravy. I've melted a little bit of butter in there uh, to go along with that sausage grease that's in the pan and adding a little salt and pepper. And then we're going to kind of cook that for a minute, add in some flour i it's about a fourth a cup and that looked to be about a fourth a cup what i had left in there i just finished off what i had left in my container we're going to cook that for just a minute and add in our milk or you can use half and half whole milk you know whatever you kind of would like to use there and basically we're just going to cook it until it thickens make sure you scrape up all those bits off the skillet and get all that incorporated in there and as you can see now it's nice and thickened and i don't know about y'all but i love biscuits and gravy it is so good and I've always enjoyed having like fried eggs with my biscuits and gravy. So I definitely wanted to fry me a couple of eggs. So I just put a little like olive oil in my pan and then I, you know, crack my eggs in there. I let them cook a little on one side until it kind of starts to set to where I can flip them. Then I flip them. I add a little bit of water in there and then I cover them with like a, a lid. I use a plate because I don't have a lid for the skillet. And this is where you're going to want to kind of check them. It, it, they cook pretty quick, especially if you want them to be still a little runny inside. And that's the way I like them. Uh, so just kind of keep an eye on them. You can always check them and cook them a little more. You have to be real careful not to overcook them. And now we're getting ready for the best part. We're going to put us some gravy on our sausage cheddar biscuits. And man, that gravy was so good. This whole meal was like so good. It really hit the spot. I had been thinking about like breakfast food like I used to love going to like Cracker Barrel for breakfast and I always loved like their biscuits and gravy and everything and so I was really craving that and so this totally hit the spot for that and of course with biscuits and gravy and eggs I have got to have my tomatoes so I've got those too 
This breakfast for dinner was so easy and really delicious, so highly recommend it. And I'll always have the recipes linked down below or topped out in the description box. Now we're going to get started on our easy crock pot beef stew. I've got some beef stew meat, some carrots, celery, onions, some tomato paste that I had frozen in the freezer. And I'm adding some potatoes to that as well as some diced tomatoes. I'm going to add some beef broth, parsley, salt, pepper, garlic, Worcestershire sauce, all that good stuff in there. So it's got lots of yummy things. And then I'll add the corn here in a little bit. I actually almost forgot it. And so you'll see me add that here in just a minute. But I'm really trying to work on cleaning out my freezer and utilizing what's in my freezer using what I have on hand. And so this was a great recipe that I really enjoyed before. And I was like, I've got to make this again because I had that stew meat in there and I really wanted to, to use that up and make some more beef stew. I just love beef stew with cornbread. I think it's like such a good... Um, I don't know, combination. And honestly, this, what's so funny is I talked about Cracker Barrel on the breakfast, but I love the, the beef stew from Cracker Barrel. And this is like the closest I feel like I've found that tastes to me a little bit like that reminds me more of it. So, so we're going to let that cook in the crock pot. We're going to go ahead and make our cornbread and that's just some cornmeal mix, some milk and egg and oil. I don't measure it, but the package on the back has a recipe and I pretty much do that kind of um, except I don't add sugar to it. I've never like added sugar to my cornbread or to my biscuits. I'm not real big on that combination, but I heat the cast iron skillet in the oven and pour that in the hot skillet and it makes such a difference. So good. Cast iron cornbread is the best. Now I just took some cornstarch there that I mixed in with some of the liquid from the crock pot. We're going to pour that in there and get that kind of, uh, you know, mixed in well and let it cook for just a little bit longer to kind of thicken it just a little bit. Now, you can make it as thick as you like by adding more cornstarch slurry to it. I think I used maybe a couple of tablespoons or something like that. I didn't do a whole lot because I didn't want it real thick. I like to like crumble my cornbread in there and eat it together like that. And there's our cornbread fresh out of the oven and our soup is ready or our stew is ready. And y'all, this is so very good. If you love beef stew, I think you would really love this recipe. It's just such a comfort food item. And so I always enjoy, you know, having that once in a while. And I definitely love that cast iron cornbread. It just tastes so good with those crispy edges and mixing it in with the, the beef stew. So definitely recommend that one. So next up, we have our meatloaf with sauteed slaw mix and cheesy potatoes. Now my meatloaf was actually already cooked in the freezer. So what I'm doing, it's in the oven while I'm making this. And I just went ahead and cooked it for a little while on 350 and then I topped it with some ketchup and cooked it a little while longer. You can definitely uh, freeze meatloaf uncooked, but I've found it works fine to freeze it cooked. So sometimes, you know, like we'll have some left over and we didn't use it all or something like that and I'll freeze it cooked. So however you like to do it is, is good. Now I just added some garlic powder, onion powder, and pepper to my slaw mix and I've just got some butter that I'm sauteing it in. I just love sauteed cabbage or really just about any veggies sauteed like that. So I think it's just a good side item, especially with meatloaf. I feel like cabbage goes well with it. But here's our meatloaf. Also made some cheesy potatoes that are going to actually be in an Easter sides video coming in April. So keep an eye out for that. This is what they look like baked. I thought I'd give you a little sneak peek of that. And that's what we served with our, um, you know, meatloaf and cabbage. And that was delicious. So we really enjoyed that. And here it is all done. I'll link the meatloaf recipe since I didn't, um, you know, show me making it. I want to say I made it once on my channel. I'll look for that if I did. And I'll link that, you know, if I did. Uh, but I'll definitely have the recipe link below also. So now we're going to get started on making some chili. This is my favorite way to make chili. Well, I say favorite, but I, there's a couple ways I kind of like making it. They're my favorite. But I've just got some onion that I'm going to saute up in some oil. And you could also make this recipe in the crock pot. So definitely feel free to just throw all these ingredients in the crock pot if you like and do it that way as well. So once I've sauteed my onions for a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and add in my pinto beans and then my kidney beans. I don't drain the pinto beans, but I do drain the kidney beans. And then I add some petite diced tomatoes. I like the petite diced ones better because you don't get like huge chunks of tomatoes. I like the smaller pieces. I use one packet of the McCormick Reduced Sodium Chili Mix, but then I also add in like some other seasonings. So I think this is really where you can make it your own. I don't measure any of these. It's just basically some different chili powders that I have and, you know, some cumin, you know, different little things like that that I'm adding in here. Garlic powder, onion powder, 
you know, of course, some pepper, some Mexican oregano, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I feel like this is really where you can just make it your own and use things that you like, because especially if you like it like really spicy, then obviously, you know, you're going to want to put more, you know, spice to it, whether that be like cayenne or whether it be like a hotter chili powder. Um, I am kind of a spice wimp, so I could definitely always go mild. You notice my chili mix was the mild mix. So, but I feel like that the, the McCormick is like a good base to start with. And then I add my own like kind of twist to it. But I'm also adding in some of my frozen ground beef. If y'all been here a little while, you know that I bulk cook my ground beef and freeze it. And so it's so handy to just throw into stuff like this because I don't even have to fool with cooking it. It's already cooked and I just throw it in there frozen. It's going to kind of thaw as everything heats and everything. So it's really handy. I definitely recommend doing that. I don't like to do it as much for chicken because I feel like chicken doesn't taste as good, you know, when, um, when it's frozen, but it, it does, you know, like I'll freeze leftover chicken and stuff like that. So, but I do bulk cook my ground beef. I added in some beef broth there, probably about a cup and a half to two cups and a can of tomato sauce. And I just like to bring this to a boil. And once it gets to a boil, I turn it down and just let it simmer for a little while. Um, it's one of those things that like if you do make this in a crock pot, you can leave it on, you know, low all day and, you know, just let people eat throughout the day whenever they feel like it. Or if you need to take it somewhere, that'd be a great way to keep it warm and stuff. But, um, but you know, simmer it for however long. Just keep an eye on it. Make sure you're not losing too much, you know, liquid or anything like that and get it kind of to the consistency you like. I know some people like anything like that a little more soupy or a little more thick. So it just depends on kind of what you like. So let me know down in the comments below if y'all have been working on any freezer stashes that you have. It can feel a little bit like chopped that cooking show when you're trying to pull this and that out and trying to put it all together. But it's kind of fun and lets you be creative too. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, I'd love it if you join my YouTube family and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any delicious recipes. I hope you have a blessed day wherever you are and I'll see you in the next one.